guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Got a big one for you today. We're gonna do Supermassive Black Hole by Muse. So, um, not the most pleasing guitar tone in the world. Uh, Matthew Bellamy likes to really, uh, really uh, give you an interesting sound in a lot of his songs. So, um, this is not the greatest guitar tone either. I'm not really trying to dial in what he's doing, just kind of the same vibe, kind of a lo-fi, raw thing he's trying to... Anyway, so, uh, we are in standard tuning here. So let's start with this opening riff. Uh, before we do that, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And even if you are, ring that little notification bell. Make sure you got that uh, done so you can see, be notified whenever I release a new video, which obviously happens a couple times a week at least. So uh, don't miss it. So we're gonna start here with this first riff. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna just like, it just starts with the open low E. And then a slow, slight bend at the 10th fret on the A string. And then back to the open E. So after you go back to the open E, then you're gonna hit it one, two, uh, three times real quick. Let's go this. Pretty simple. Then you go back to the bent 10 again, and then back to the low E. So we have this. And then we just have just two hits there. And then the next hit pretty much starts the riff over again, where we started with just one hit of the E. So we have this. One, two, one, starts over. Right there, before the ending of that riff, we had this little fill. So that's a little slight bend to the second fret on the G string. And then pick it normal. And then do a hammer on from zero to two in the G. Pull back off to zero. Over to two on the D. All right, then that takes us to the really the second riff of the intro. Um, this is where things really start kind of picking up with the full band. Um, and it sounds like this. All right, and it's got that same fill that ends it. So now this riff is pretty much the verse as well, except there's a little slight little alteration in it, I'll show you. But so that part right here though, that we're at right now is still in the intro. To the low E open, kind of just picking, you know, straight eighth notes now, just all downstrokes. Open E twice, and now instead of grabbing that note here at the 10th fret, you're grabbing it at the 5th fret, and he usually uses his pinky. At the 5th fret on the D string. Then a couple of uh, low E opens again, and then you're gonna be uh, three hits on the 3rd fret power chord off the low E string. So this. Then back to this, uh, starting the riff over. Now the second ending, instead of just doing this, we have, we're up at the fifth fret and we go two hits there on the power chord, back down to the three. So, so instead of three hits on the three, it's two hits on the five and one hit on the three. So we have this. All right, so now we basically repeat that exactly, except for those last two. Those last two chords there are now instead gonna be five played twice and then moved up to seven instead of down to three. So let me play that all together so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Second ending. All right, so that's the whole part. After you, and then you just start over everything again. Now the second time right before the vocals come in, instead of going, you had that little fill again. All right, and now we get to the verse when the vocals come in. The vocal, the verse is just like that riff we just did. 
except that initial power chord there is just a single note on the low E string in third fret. And that's all that is. So he's just kind of stripping it down a bit for the so it doesn't interfere with the vocals. And then you do play the power chords though when it does that little five down to three. Second inning. That same fill that's ending it. And then we have the chorus, which is probably the most interesting uh, riff of the whole song, uh, and the most involved, but it's, it's using mostly octaves, so it sounds like this. So that ending is just a really, really weird. I don't even know it was on guitar, but we're just gonna follow the bait, the line anyway, <laughs> just uh, just for completeness' sake. Something that you can do there. Um, so we'll start here with just this octave at the fifth fret off the low E string. So fifth fret on low E, seventh fret on the D. So you're hitting the low E twice, and then hitting that seventh fret on the D once. And you do that, so you do that a couple times. Now then it goes, you basically take the octave, the four, the three. And he's really accenting the top note there. But you can still hear the bottom one going with it. And then when you get down to the third fret, five, four, three, Kind of do the same rhythm again. So we had this so far. Then you're gonna move up to the fifth fret. Hit really now focus more on the sixth string instead of the top note. And you're playing that twice in the fifth fret. Then once in the sixth. And then we're back to that same pattern there now at the seventh fret. Pattern is two hits on the low E and one on the D. So we have this. So that same octave. So so far we have this. Then you're gonna go back and hit the low E once. And then you're gonna do this little melodic line, which is nine, eight, seven, five on the D over to the seventh on the A string. Then the low E open twice, and then we just have power chords to go. On the second fret of the low E power chord, third fret, and fourth. And then you start over. So you do it four times, but the fourth time when you get up here, you stop that little melodic, little melodic line at the fifth fret on the D instead of going all the way down to the seventh fret on the A. It'll slight pause, and then we have that really weird effect. It sounds like this weird synth effect, and it sounds like this. And that's the actual line, the bass line that's going there. So. Whether he's playing that on the guitar, or, you know, when he plays live, he just does a lot. He's always, you know, kind of throwing the guitar around. It's really hard to kind of follow what he's doing. So, so we have, so seventh fret a couple times on the low E, then six, then once on the five, and then five on the D once. So, 
slide bend on that second fret of low E, and then open E. All right. Now we come back around to the second verse now, and there's no guitar the first kind of through time through the verse, and then the second time through, it starts with that same. Except that doesn't have that, it just skips the little, that little ending fill, and there's just silence there where that was before. So other than that, it's the same thing. And then we go through the same chorus uh, again, um, and then the same opening riff after the chorus. But now we get to the solo, which is um, kind of a Matthew Bellamy thing. He's got a really weird effect on it, which... You know, I'm just going to put a little bit of delay on it, but I'll play the same notes and I'll kind of show you what he's doing. Once again, live, he just goes nuts. It's, uh, he doesn't really follow what he does on the album here, so we just kind of have to um, kind of take my word for it. So here we go. We have this. That's it. All right, so uh, <laughs> I'm basically just starting at the fourth fret on the G and then sliding up to nine. And then you're going to grab the tenth fret real quick on the B string and do a little bend. And then you can, or you can just do it with the index finger. And as you release that bend, you start doing a trill between 10 and 11. And the trill gets a little bit slower. And then he bends that note back up a half step again. And then you're going to hear him kind of doing this really kind of uh, uh, abrasive vibrato, kind of really uh, jagged vibrato. And he's, what he's doing is he has a half step pre-bend going at the 14th fret of the B string. And he's doing that up there. And he rolls the volume on while he does it. And then he has a bend at the 15th fret, which he rolls the volume up as he does that as well. So it is. So. And there might be like an octave pedal on there and stuff too, who knows. But uh, it's kind of a crazy sound that I'm not, uh, it's going to even try to re replicate. All right, because he never really does live anyway. Um, and that's about it. It goes back through the same chorus riff again, and then it goes the same um, opening riff also closes the song. So it's got some interesting stuff, and it. it's obviously a very unique uh, guitar style that Matthew Bellamy has. He, he doesn't use do a lot of stock riffs, you know. Um, so hopefully you guys will get some cool ideas to do your own stuff with it as well. All right, I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.